Hello, welcome to the Jason Staten Leadership Podcast. Um, I'm excited today. We have our very first guest. So if you're a part of the Raising the Bar course, uh, you know that once a month we have an expert and uh, the criteria for the experts that we have on those calls are two things. One, it's somebody that I know has invested in their personal development and two, they are actively uh, investing in, in the development of others. And so every expert that we'll have is gonna meet that criteria. And today we have Mike Hawkins, who is a lifelong friend of mine. Well, I shouldn't say lifelong, but at least 15 years. In fact, I was thinking today he was at um, my daughter, Brooke, her kindergarten graduation. And Brooke is now 22. Wow. So uh, some yeah. time has flown by. But, <laughs> a little uh, bit, just a little bit. Yeah, Mike is gonna be on uh, Saturday, the 13th at 10 a.m. Uh, on our call. So if you're not a part of Raising the Bar yet, you're going to want to get, if, if you didn't join Raising the Bar for any other reason, but these calls with our experts, you're going to find today just in this interview that we have, uh, there's going to be so much value added to you just by listening to these uh, these people. They're, first of all, they're all incredible people. And I can't say enough, enough about Mike uh, and his friendship to me and my family. Uh, he and his wife, uh, Jenny, they, uh, started Pax Dental here in Southern Maryland in California, Maryland is the actual location of their dental practice. And uh, they started, they built a brand new building uh, about a year ago. And if it wasn't a dentist office, it would be the nicest coffee shop <laughs> in Maryland. I mean, it's just class. Uh, and that, I think that to me that, that their dental practice is just an embodiment of who they are. They're just class people. Uh, you can be comfortable around them. They're kind. And they're three beautiful kids, Reagan, Jace and Bryce. Uh, so just an amazing family. And I'm honored today to have Mike on. And so I just want him to start off by sharing a few things, a little bit about himself. Yeah, Jason, uh, thanks. I, I definitely appreciate the kind words. Uh, it, it, it honestly is my honor to be here. So, uh, you know, uh, Jason for me is, is not only a great friend, friend and uh, spiritual advisor, uh, but he's a, a trusted and, and business leader advisor for me as well. So, so it truly is an honor for, uh, for me to be here. Um, just a little bit about myself, and uh, I know you know we're talking kind of leadership and kind of kind of where we you know where I've been. I, I know we've uh, you've been kind of right there with me uh, throughout the whole process, and uh, we've developed a, a really great friendship. And so um, I uh, I moved here uh, you know really straight out of college from West Virginia University uh, uh, to to work on uh, the Naval Air Station base, and uh, straight out of undergrad, I, I spent 17 years in. Uh, the public sector working for the Department of Defense as a business financial manager. Um, this included some rotations to the Pentagon uh, for the sec Assistant Secretary of the Navy, um, Headquarters Marine Corps, um, and then most of my time was spent uh, at, the, at the Naval Air Systems Command uh, working on some major uh, defense acquisition programs uh, for some you know, pretty, pretty large budgets of a, a billion dollars or more. Um, in May of 2019, I uh, Left the government for the private sector to pursue an opportunity at my, my wife's dental practice, as, as, as you uh, had uh, informed everyone. And uh, really, Jason, I haven't looked back since. Yeah, and that, that's one reason I wanted to, that you were one of the first people I sought out, um, not just to have on this call, but, but when I had the idea of raising the bar, you're somebody that I sought out uh, because I know you know, I don't want somebody to talk to me about taking risks in my life that hasn't done it, but I've watched you do that. So that's kind of where I want to start at. Now, Mike and I, like I said, we started when we met, he was kind of just getting started out on the base and I watched him progress there. And uh, I worked on the base as well during some of that. And I, I know the level of respect the people there on the base had for him, uh, just his work ethic, his character. Um, and, and we met, you know, I think back our kind of our first meeting we were much more athletic I think a few years ago <laughs> and we played some flag football and some um, softball together um, but I, I did I watched you you make some pretty big uh, career moves I watched you grow through the uh, there on the base and just become a very respected high level leader had a very comfortable job I would assume I mean we didn't really talk salary but I, th I think you were doing pretty well and obviously working for the government has great benefits and I know you could have just kind of, you know, kind of rode that all the way to the end. And it would have been a great life for you, I'm sure. But I watched you make a big decision uh, to leave that. 
And uh, so I kind of want to start there and ask you, you know, what kind of what kind of prompted that big decision? And and because of that decision, you know, Paxdental, which, again, um, just an incredible um, I mean, I, sometimes I can't wait to go to the dentist just because it's such <laughs> amazing. The staff, the employees are all great. Uh, right. The location is awesome. But so kind of talk to us about that, if you would, Mike. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, uh, that was a big decision. It was it was honestly the second biggest decision in my life. Um, but I think it's important before I get to the why and how uh, to give a little background on, on, on how Pax Dental started. Right. Yeah. Uh, so my wife, uh, as, as, as Jason alluded to, is an identical twin. Um, her uh, sister Denise is is a is a practicing dentist as well. So, they, uh, as you can probably tell, they they obviously chose their same career path uh, from the time they were toddlers. Uh, they did everything together, you know, whether it was sports, college, and and then all, uh, obviously uh, dental school. Um, so, um, you know, one one of my uh, proudest moments of, of my wife is when uh, and her sister as well is. Um, just how competitive that the Maryland Dental School was. It was it, it was the first dental school in the country, and um, they uh, were two applicants, two identical twin applicants, out of over a thousand uh, uh, thousand people wow. um, applying, and they all had the same. You know, everybody had the good grades. Everybody passed the the the, the what they call a dental aptitude test. And uh, so, what's going to separate them apart from everybody? And uh, you know, to, for the, they only sec- accepted a hundred people in the class wow. of 2008. So wow. uh, that's when they graduated. They, uh, so in 2005, they both got the news that they both were accepted. Uh, so, so it was, you know, very proud of, you know, uh, what she did on the, you know, the, on the, on the schooling side. Yeah. Um, but so uh, shortly after dental school, she started uh, working a few years and as an associate, uh, both her and her sister, um, they, at that point, they kind of uh, separated a little bit because there was an opportunity to work in the same practice together. And um, my wife had an opportunity uh, to buy a practice in, in 2011, an existing practice. And her sister had a, you know, it's a single doctor practice. Most, most uh, because you have to be a licensed physician to buy uh, a practice in the state of Maryland, uh, most of them were single doctor practices. You know, there's not, there wasn't many uh, multi-doctor practices at the time. Um, so my wife had the first opportunity to buy, and then shortly later, uh, her, her identical twin sister uh, bought a practice, maybe as a crow's flies, about a mile away from her sister. Wow. Um, but um, from the very beginning, though, when they graduated dental school, I had this, I have, I have kind of an entrepreneurial spirit, and I had this vision of them working together. And I knew that that's, that was the end goal for me. That's what, you know, that was the objective. Um, how to get there. Uh, I knew was going to be a challenge. I mean, there's a lot involved, not to mention I had a, a full-time job as you had, had talked about. Um, but really when they bought their practice, um, they, they, my brother-in-law really uh, kind of uh, gave this, uh, brought this point up to me, you know, we were just buying them a job. Yeah. That's essentially what we're doing. I mean, I, I, as a numbers guy and a financial guy, I, I looked through the financials and they were good. Um, the net income that the business was making uh, for that single doctor practice was attributable to what a doctor or dentist should be making um, as a salary. So we were basically just buying both of them a job. Um, shortly after she bought the practice, I saw an opportunity. I wanted to turn this job into a business, right? Two different things. Um, uh, so the dream was, you know, obviously to bring the, the twins to practice together, but to do that, we needed a new facility. Right. We we the the facilities that they were working in were four or five op offices and just didn't have room for uh, both of the girls to to work together. Um, so in 2012, uh, I went to the bank with uh, with a business plan and, and I thought I had a solid business plan and they looked at me uh, like I was crazy. And, uh, but what they did though, is they, they, you know, and this is, uh, you know, I get into talking to people about trusted advisor, um, um, that same banker who said, you know, Hey, this isn't going to work. The numbers aren't there. Um, showed me the path to get there and, uh, where we, where we, we needed to be. And so, um, I, 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 it was, it was definitely a roadblock for me. It was definitely, um, kind of a punch in the gut, but, um, three years later in 2015, I went back to them. Uh, with a new business plan. And uh, in 2017, they uh, conditionally approved uh, of financing for both not only the uh, construction of a ground ground up construction, uh, but also, but also, also a, a build out for all state of the art, you know, new technology. 
Um, we went to underwriting in uh, 2018, uh, 2000, early in 2019, we broke ground. Um, and at that time I was, I was starting to get a little burned out. There was a lot involved in the planning as aspects yeah. of, you know, this, this whole process. And so, um, I, and I, I essentially at that point had, had, I basically had two jobs. I was working two 40 hour jobs, if not, if not more than that, um, basically the government job and then managing the construction and the build out of the facility, uh, you know, after we broke ground, um, I, I, I'll never forget, uh, laying in bed one night in May of 2019 and, and, almost to tears. I, I just told my wife, I said, I said, I can't do it anymore. I, yeah. I can't, I'm burned out. Uh, and she, uh, uttered a few words that, that I'll never forget, uh, her sweet voice and how she sounded. And she said, we'll quit. And I never, I came to at that moment, wow. uh, you know, it, it, it really, God told me that that was the right decision. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, I, I have a, a secure job. Um, I, I, we don't have to, you know, our, our, we're provided, we're able to provide food on the table. There's, there's no risk. I mean, it, most government jobs are, are, are pretty guaranteed unless you screw up pretty badly. Yeah. And the benefits and the retirement, I mean, I had everything. If you would have told me when I graduated from school and, and they laid out the plan for my career um, and the opportunities that I would have and that I, that I, that I realized that, that I would be quitting uh, the government job after 17 years, I would have said, you're crazy. Yeah. Uh, but I knew that was the answer. So, yeah. so, so there was a big trust there, you know, trust in God, trust in the process. And, and so, uh, so we moved forward and uh, in June of 19, I resigned from my position from the government. And as I said earlier, I, I haven't looked back. Uh, you know, we completed construction in March of 2020. Um, and then two weeks later, uh, we were shut down for COVID for wow. two months. And so, uh, you know, when, when, I, when we uh, transitioned uh, to from, you know, when I, when, uh, when I transitioned from project manager to CEO, CEO uh, of Pax Dental, um, uh, we, we, we implemented a, a ton of process improvement initiatives. And as a result, even, even with COVID in 2020, and I tell you, that's not a time I want to live back the uncertainty of those two months. For sure. Uh, but as a result of, of, of everything we did on the business side of it, right, the doctors were still doing their thing. Our, our, my job was to keep them clinical and I would help on the business side. Um, but we had a 250% uh, annual uh, revenue growth wow. uh, uh, rate from when we bought my wife, essentially bought my wife a job in 2011. Wow. Well, and since you kind of touched on that, I want to I want to visit that for a minute. You know, when we talk about COVID, I think I was talking to somebody on the phone yesterday and, you know, I, I, I mentioned complaining about COVID doesn't really work because complaining only works if, you know, there's somebody that can be, um, you know, I was in something that nobody else was in, but we were all in it together. However, we were all affected differently. And I think as a leader, um, you know, obviously my, my leadership role was, is pastoring a church, but though it wasn't just me, the hard part of going through COVID wasn't just me. It was the weight of all the people that I'm responsible for. And Absolutely. so can you talk to me a little bit, you know, you guys went through, you move into this brand new building, you know, uh, which I know wasn't free. I'm sure you're at least <laughs> paying a little bit of money for that beautiful building. And you've got all these employees. You guys have increased, and in, you know, I don't the staffing numbers. You increased, and now you got all these people that are depending upon the decisions that you make. So, can you kind of talk to me about that, and what kind of what was your focus during those two months? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I spoke about the second hardest decision in my life uh, was to leave my job, um, but the hardest decision in my life was was happened during COVID, and uh, so so yeah, I had two of the toughest decisions. Uh, that I've ever, ever had to make in my life in, in, in a period of less than a year. Um, yeah. I'll tell you, that's, that's, it's, it was really trying. But, but basically, when COVID started, there were so many uh, uncertainty and unknowns, right? We didn't know how long it was going to last. Was this going to be a two-week shutdown? Was this going to be two months? Was it going to be a year, right? There, there, and we didn't know just how, you know, you know, we didn't know much about the disease, what, you know, the government was going to do and what, you know, we were going to be restricted, how we were going to be able to operate. Um, so, uh, we, so immediately, you know, we didn't, we didn't, uh, you know, 
spend our time complaining and, and, and really being a victim, we said, okay, we got to start planning. And so, um, so what we did was uh, we, we, we put a game plan together and we had the doctors focus on getting some continuing education. Um, so they went, we thought their time would be best uh, utilized to sharpen their skills. And so um, they uh, basically completed a mini residency during that time wow. uh, on a cutting edge treatment for sleep disorder breathing. Uh, and I spent all my time figuring out how we we're going to survive, right? <laughs> um, that involved uh, PPE. We all know there are shortages of PPE. And in the dental community, we're kind of the unicorn of the healthcare, right? So all the PPE was going towards the medical community, and, and we were having trouble getting, uh, getting supplies from our vendor. Um, and, and with all the government regulations, and, uh, you know, that was a very, very tough. But, you know, how, how do we survive? You know, we, we looking at when we do reopen, right, what, what's the procedure time is going to look like? What's the logistics of, of not having a waiting room? Because the health department was saying that, you know, we couldn't have people in our waiting room. They had to uh, uh, wait in vehicles. So the logistics of trying to get people in and keeping the docs on schedule and, and, and not having a, having appointments go on time when, you know, it was um, that with that planning for how we were going to open, not knowing when we we're going to open was, was, was really challenging. So that's what I did most of my time. And then also keeping up to date on, on, on just, you know, what the virus was educating myself, um, following all the CDC uh, recommendations, guidelines, as long as the Maryland State Dental Association. Uh, that turned out as busy as I was during the times when I was working a government job and planning for uh, the new facility and, and, and opening of the new dental office. That probably was the, one of the busiest times of my life, a lot of late hours uh, at the office. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I, I, as I said, I went to a secure job to almost, you know, almost a guaranteed job to, to now both my wife and I on unemployment, right? Wow. Open up two weeks and my wife and I are on unemployment. Mm. Um, but, you know, to get to your point, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't care about my wife and I, I mean, I obviously I care about ourselves, but yeah. I knew we were going to be okay. Yeah. But the weight of having the, of the decision to lay off 22 em employees was the hardest decision of my life. And I did not take that life lightly. And I, 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 uh, you know, when I reflect back and, and, and think about it, it, it just, it's like a punch in the gut to me because um, just not knowing how long that was going to be. I mean, we can always look back. Hindsight's always 2020, right? And we can always look back and say, ah, it wasn't so bad, right? But we did, but not knowing whether it was going to be two months or, or six months or a year uh, was a hard thing. And, and knowing that there, the families that we've employed, we went from six employees at the old office to 20 three employees. Wow. So the only person we, we uh, kept uh, uh, off unemployment was our practice administrator who here was, was here day in and day out. And she uh, tried to, uh, I mean, she's been the most loyal employee that we've ever had. And she has, uh, she offered, Hey, I'm going to go on unemployment. I said, I, I wouldn't let her, um, you know, and, and she, uh, she, she was just instrumental in helping me as well. Uh, you know, get back to, uh, you know, kind of keeping me straight and, yeah. and when, with all this chaos. Um, but the biggest thing, uh, you know, what we found, uh, you know, I, I look at what happened uh, with COVID in those two months. And um, really, uh, it was a time where our team came together. And so from the moment that that our team reacted to, you know, I, I was, when I, when I got everybody a Zoom, of course, everybody, nobody heard of Zoom before, uh, yeah. before COVID. Now it's a common household name. Right. Um, but when we got everybody on a Zoom and finally worked out all the technology kinks um, and I had to, you know, to let everybody know that what we had to do, um, you know, I let them know that, you know, we're here for them. Right. And, and I, I, I was very transparent and I said that, you know, if there's, you know, we have to make this decision for, survivability of the business, right? Yeah. Like there's yeah. not enough cash flow not to, to, to uh, keep everybody uh, employed and we, we, will, we, we won't be able to survive, right? And I saw the big picture and I don't know if every, all the employees saw the big picture, but one, one thing, but what they did was they trusted me, right? Yeah. And, and they, they, they knew I was, you know, they, they genuine and they knew yeah. I cared. It was a very emotional phone call. So over the next uh, two months, uh, we, we had about two uh, Zoom meetings uh, a week. Wow. And um, we were informing them on, on our projections of when we th thought we were gonna be able to open. We were uh, talking about uh, all our planning for the procedures and protocols that we're gonna do in the office. Um, and 
the Zoom in his meetings kind of took a little twist and it kind of got a little interesting because throughout the Zoom meetings and while we're waiting for everybody to get on, I, I noticed a lot of kiddos in the background, right? And so then we started engaging with the kids and obviously going from six employees to 20 uh, three employees, we have had some new employees, right? So we hadn't had the time to really get to know the family members. Um, so we started using this opportunity uh, to uh, uh, you know, chat with the kids. And, and then it turned into this. Uh, we, we had um, at the end of every Zoom meeting, we had uh, a PAX Kids Zoom meeting. And so uh, I, I led that and was able to come up with some fun games and some, uh, uh, some giveaways and some prizes and um, I'll, I'll never forget Kelly went to Walmart and bought about $500 worth of toys. And, uh, wow. we had this game where they could pick numbers and, um, and they won some prizes and, 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 and those kids still talk about that to this day. Um, so that was, that was one of the, the, the twists that I didn't see coming, but, uh, was really, uh, touching to me. Um, you know, the, 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 the staff, uh, put together, um, a video, a personalized video. I think I think it was about fifteen or twenty minutes long, and where each of them uh, went through and thanked us for everything that we do. And, you know, these are people that we laid off, wow. right? And they're thanking us for what we've done for them during this time. Wow. Um, and and that was that was very powerful. That's when I knew we were doing the right thing, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so that the value of our team coming together in a moment of extreme unknowns um, that far outweighed the revenue loss that we showed in those two months. Wow. So much in what Mike just said. I mean, there's a lesson in, uh, if you're a leader, I mean, how to handle crisis management. You just, you just heard how to lead in crisis. He gave so many points. He, he, he talked about staying aware of what's going on, uh, continuing focusing on growth during that time as well. His, uh, his wife and her sister went through that, that uh, residency um, or that, that continued education. Uh, but, but the thing that real again, with Mike, the reason uh, I've always been drawn to Mike is uh, at the end of it, you know, he talked about he knew when he knew he was doing something right was not when they looked at their spreadsheet and saw the balance. But when at the end of having to lay off employees, they were thanking him. It's the impact on people. And I think our world, where we're at right now as a nation, if, if we would all get back to that, about trying to make an impact on one another through kindness and generosity, um, you know, it's just going to be a better world if we can get back to that. So anyway, just so, I mean, if you could listen to those, if, if you're a leader, listen to that last 10 minutes right there. And you just got a, a course in how to lead through crisis. So thank you for that, Mike. Um, yeah, thanks. that leads me to kind of the next question. I, so if you can look back over your last 20 years, your, your growth and development, um, what are the three most important decisions you've made that have been, that you feel like Without those, you would not have been able to grow to be what you are. And I know we could probably go to 10 or 20 decisions, but what would the three <laughs> most important decisions be? Yeah, uh, whew, that's a tough one. Um, so one of the biggest things that I've kind of learned uh, throughout uh, you know, my journey to get to where we are is, is really trusting the process, right? you know, always keeping an eye on that end objective, right? You can't just be, you know, flying loosely in the wind, right? You have to have, you have to have that injected and you, you have to strive to it. That doesn't mean that, that things aren't going to go away your way. As I talked about, you know, how many roadblocks did we hit before and have to veer off course um, to before, you know, we, uh, 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 you know, to, to, to continue on and to get there, right? It was, e I, there were so many times in my life that it was easy to quit, right? Yeah. But but I had to trust the process and, and understand that big picture. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably the first one. Um, if I, for number two, um, I would probably say, you know, uh, surrounding myself with trusted advisors, right? Um, it doesn't matter how much education I've had, um, you know, I, I'm really not an expert on anything, right? You know, they're, they're you know, I, I look at, you know, the, the degree I have and it's kind of just a general degree or whatever. And, you know, even with my MBA, what, what would think, what thing my MBA taught, taught me was to, you know, you know, to, was to surround yourself with trusted advisors, right? Um, and um, that, you know, my, 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 uh, my strength is solving problems, right? But I might not necessarily know 
you know, I'm not the expert. What I've done in the dental office is, you know, and I, and we have some assistants that are really great assistants. They have years of experience. And I look at some of the processes that we have in place and, um, and, and they're essentially broken. And so I don't know how they do this, this, and this, yeah. but once I learn and, and talk to them, I can help solve that problem. Right. Yeah. And so really when I talk about trusted advisors, it's, it's your accountants, it's your legal, it's your spiritual advisors. It's even your vendors. Right. I mean, I'm talking a lot of, uh, uh, uh business type of things, but even it's just personal friends and, yeah. and, you know, consultants. And, um, you know, I, I look at you, I've looked at you time. We, when, when COVID hit Jason, we were talking, yeah. uh, on the phone, uh, probably almost weekly. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, you're, you're one of my trusted advisors and, and I, I, I didn't just do that in, in a vacuum with you. I was talking to my dental supply reps who've had experience in, in, the shortages with PPP, P, PPE, excuse me, and 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 get, getting their advice on what we should do and how much we should um, try to buy and 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 where we could buy. And so there was there was just a lot of you know uh, things throughout you know uh, the whole uh, process of of getting to where we are. It's it's all about trusting advisors. Um, the third one. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit on this one because uh, it's almost like a three for one here, but. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Marcus Lemonis. I don't know how many are familiar with Marcus Lemonis, but he's the CEO of Camping World. And uh, he's actually a TV personality. You've probably seen him on uh, the show, The Profit. Uh, but his three uh, keys to success are, are people, process, and product, right? So three keys to success, people, process, and product. Um, so when we opened the new facility, uh, you know, I knew we had the right people. I knew we had a tremendous product, um, but going from a small single doctor office to a multi-doctor office, our processes weren't there, right? We, we, had, to, we had to adjust and we had to change. Um, so um, that's one of the, you know, the, the decisions in my life is, is really just learning how to do that and, and, and going with that, uh, that motto of, uh, you know, uh, of fixing, you know, your process, right? And, and look at it and, and, and really uh, dissecting, like, it, it, I'm not just saying we had good people. I'm not just saying we had a good product, right? I had to look at all three of those and really uh, evaluate those and see where we stood. So, Awesome. Yeah. I, again, just those of you that are listening right now, just a lot of gold that's being shared with you from, uh, and yesterday I had the privilege to sit down with our, um, and, and talk with Mike. And uh, he talked to me about how that, you know, just by keeping an eye on their process, little adjustments that he made, that they made there at the dental practice that have made a huge difference in the bottom line. Um, you know, so I, I've, I've watched him do these things. And uh, I know that their Pax Dental is just going to continue to grow. And, and I know this from, from talking to Mike as well, that this is, this isn't the end of his dream. This is not the end of where they're going to end up. It's, it's going to grow. And it's going to go further. Uh, so, so that will kind of lead me to the last question, Mike. Um, you know, Saturday, the 13th of February, again, you're going to be the first guest, our first expert. And I know you said you're not an expert, but <laughs> I think you are. Uh, I think you've earned that right through your, um, you know, your, your life and uh, the things you've accomplished. But I, I know, you, you know, when I first started thinking of raising the bar, you're one of the first people I talked to when it was just four metaphors in my mind. Right. Mm -hmm. I knew God had given me this idea. I didn't know how it was all going to, I didn't know all of the process, all the steps, all the details. I just, uh, you're one of the first people, uh, one of the first people I sat down with and asked him about that. So I know that you've kind of seen raising the bar. We've talked yeah. a lot about it. Um, what would you say to those that are out there that are maybe deciding? So they're watching this interview right now and they're kind of deciding, you know, do I want to put my investment into this? Do I, is this something that I should do or not? What would you say to those people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's funny when, when we first sat down and, and, and you just kind of were just, it was just a really an innocent conversation where you were just, uh, you know, chatting to me about some of the things uh, that you were doing. And, and I was the one I think that was initiated to like, you know, tell me more, like, and, and I started getting hungry. And the more you spoke, the more I was hungry, right? I, I was like, wanted this, right? Like, this is, and I think I told you, I said, this is gold. Like, what you have is gold. Like, uh, I, I was, uh, and I, I just, I, I, I was driving home after, after, uh, you know, after the, after the work day that day. And I'm just, I just couldn't get it out of my mind. Right. Like uh, this is what you have is good stuff. Right. I can tell you this, I can tell you businesses pay thousands of dollars for this leadership development training, thousands. Okay. Um, and that's just for content. Right. 
the level of engagement and consultation from Jason alone is worth thousands more, right? Thousands more. Um, so I, I, I can tell you, I'm a living example. If you follow these principles and the framework that Jason sets out, you will succeed. I mean, the sky is really the limit, right? You know, and, and you've been that trusted advisor for me and, and, and you've been there through my journey. And so once again, you know, I want to thank you and uh, I appreciate you uh, thinking of me and I appreciate you having me on here. You know, uh, I, I wouldn't be here today if it, if it wasn't for uh, all the values and the, and, and the leadership uh, uh, training that you've given me over the years. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Mike. And uh, that's, I take that endorsement any day, um, <laughs> uh, just because I hold Mike in such high esteem. So again, if you're, if you're watching this interview right now, I want to, I want to encourage you join Raising the Bar. You don't want to miss the call coming up Saturday, February 13th, 10 o'clock AM Eastern time. In that setting, Mike is going to take about 20, 25 minutes to share whatever he wants. So he's going to pick I've asked him to pick kind of the one thing that he thinks is most important for personal development. All right. And so, and we're going to give him 20, 25 minutes to talk about that. And then we're going to open up the phone lines and give you an opportunity to jump in there and ask Mike some questions. All right. So, and I promise you um, it's going to, you know, usually they say the best, they, they say, you know, you save the best for last. Well, we're, we're starting off right at the top. You can't get any better than what we're going to have. So if you're ever in California, Maryland, if you're in the area and you're looking for a dentist, uh, Pax Dental is the one. It's over, uh, if you're in the area, um, it's over behind Firehouse Subs, uh, Maple Drive. Is that right, Mike? Did I get it? The Maple Drive, yep. Right. yep. Maple Drive yep. in California, Maryland. Great people. Um, and this won't be the last time you see Mike on uh, Raising the Bar. He's going to be a, a regular here. So thank you for your time, Mike. And I look forward to uh, the next time we have you. And we look forward to the 13th uh, phone call with you. Absolutely, Jason. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Have a great day. All right. You as well.